He had been widely tipped to return to power, but it's still a remarkable personal comeback for Nawaz Sharif after being ousted as Prime Minister by the army in 1999. And on the day after, Pakistan's newspapers reflected. This is Lahore, the power base of Nawaz Sharif's powerful political clan, its electorate the seat of his success. The masses have voted for Nawaz's Muslim League and now it's their turn to fulfill the promises they made to the people, says this Lahore resident Mohammed Naim. They should now act according to people's expectations so that the masses prosper and peace prevails in the country. It was cricketing legend Imran Khan who had most threatened to upset Nawaz Sharif's ambitions, galvanizing young voters with his call for a new Pakistan. With victory apparently in sight, Nawaz Sharif seemed to recognize the force behind the challenge. The promises we had made to the youth, he said, with God's help, we will fulfill each and every single promise which we made to you. Voters yesterday defied the violence that plagued the campaign and continued on election day itself to turn out in the highest numbers in many years, an over 60% turnout, it appears. To the authorities, it showed public faith in democracy, despite the country's many challenges. I'm so overjoyed that I don't know where I should begin. The chief election commissioner, Fakhruddin Ibrahim, said the percentage of voting was very high. I call it empowerment of the people, he said, a public show of strength. If Nawaz Sharif and his party do fall short of the majority they needed to form a government on their own, as looks most likely, he now has to cut deals with other parties to form the strong and stable government he promised. He's always said that a new and ineffective coalition would be bad news for Pakistan, given the many critical issues it faces. He will have a honeymoon period of sorts to go by his celebrating supporters, but from the economy to tackling extremism, time will not be on his side. Mike Aldridge, BBC News, Islamabad.